okay so today is our topic is uh, probability distribution uh, different types of probability distribution for example binomial poison and normal distribution all right so let us first uh, go through some introduction so distribution is basically of two types one is your frequency distribution another one is your probability distribution so your frequency distribution it is is the listing of observed or actual frequencies of all the outcomes of an experiment that actually occurred when experiment was done whereas your probability distribution it is the listing of the probabilities of all the possible outcomes that could occur if the experiment was done okay so in your whereas in your uh, frequency distribution we are listing all the outcomes that have actually occurred in an experiment after we have conducted an experiment or after we have observed some phenomena okay whereas in probability distribution the, the thing itself has not happened but but what happened uh, it is listing the probability or the expected outcome or the expected frequency of an outcome that you are going to get okay that is your probability distribution so it can be described as your probability dis, uh, distribution can be described as a diagram that is the probability tree a table or a mathematical formula so there are different types of probability distribution uh, one is discrete probability distribution another one is your continuous probability distribution uh, then discrete for uh, discrete probability distribution is further uh, divided into binomial distribution and uh, poison distribution these are the subtypes of uh, discrete uh, probability distribution whereas uh, normal distribution is the example of uh, your continuous probability distribution we have many time heard and read about uh, normal distribution but today we are going to also discuss about binomial and poison distribution so uh, discrete distribution is the distribution in which a random variable can take only limited number of values for example number of heads in tosses or the outcome of uh, outcome of rolling a dice so in that case only particular finite value can be the outcome in case of tossing a coin it can be head or tail in case of rolling a dice it could be one two three four five or six right this type of uh, uh, this type of distribution uh, or this type of event in which a particular finite values could be the outcome is known as your discrete distribution whereas in continuous uh, whereas in continuous distribution a random variable can take any value for example height of the student in the class so height of the student in, in the class could not only be whole number or some particular finite uh, numbers like uh, uh, four or five that uh, height of a student in height of the students in a class could be either four or five it could be either 4.1 4.1.2 1 anything in between uh, four five five to six so it could be anything in between so it is defined as a range not as a particular number okay so this type of distribution is known as your continuous distribution so now comes the tree drive a uh, tree diagram a, a fair coin is tossed twice so this is the t tree diagram of uh, uh, we, this is the tree diagram when a uh, coin is tossed twice a coin is uh, flipped twice right so this is the example of a tree diagram how can we uh, represent this discrete distribution in, through a tree diagram okay so for the first time when the coin is tossed it can only have two outcomes either head or tail right but then after again uh, after tossing the coin second time again it could have two outcomes head or tail similarly for the second outcome it can lead to uh, so in the second outcome also if we 
uh, toss the coin second time it will it can have the uh, outcome of head and tail so at last or finally there are going to be four outcomes in this case right so head head that means in the first uh, in the first toss you got head and in second toss also you got head that will be one outcome another outcome would be head tail means that in the first uh, toss of the coin you are getting head in the second toss of coin you are getting tail then when you then third outcome is your tail head which means in the first toss of the coin you are getting tail as the outcome and after tossing the coin second time you are getting head as the outcome okay then the fourth then the fourth outcome uh, is going to be tail tail that means in the first uh, out in the outcome of the first flip of the coin you are getting tail and then after the second flipping of the coin you are again getting tail that is the tail tail outcome and this is how the tree diagram is going to represent all this uh, process and the outcome so you attach all the probabilities to each event okay so to each outcome uh, so uh, when we are first flipping the coin the event the event is flipping of the coin okay and possible outcome is head or tail so these are equally likely outcomes so uh, head all head is having the probability of half and tail is also having the probability of a half because these are equally likely events if if our coin is fair and we are assuming that our coin is fair <clears throat> then we we are flipping the coin second time right so again uh, a coin can only have an outcome of head and tail head and tail and these outcomes are equally likely so all these outcome would have a probability of 1 by 2 1 by 2 1 by 2 1 by 2 okay so what would be the probability of outcome head head okay so as we know as we discussed uh, in our previous sessions that two independent outcome okay so if suppose there are two in the uh, there are two independent outcomes a and b okay and if we want to find out the probability of a intersection b or a joint b right a intersection b which means that uh, that the outcome is common to both a and b or that that it is occurring in both a and b so the probability of this a intersection b can be calculated by probability of a multiplied by probability of b right because these are independent events so the probability of h h here a is also h and b is also h outcome of a is also h and outcome of b the second flipping of coin is also h so the probability of h h out of all the outcome is 1 by 2 multiplied by 1 by 2 and that is giving you 1 by 4 similarly with the other outcomes h and t so probability of getting the first h is 1 by 2 multiplied by probability of getting the tail after the second flipping of coin is 1 by 2 right so the final uh, the probability of this outcome is also going to be 1 by 2 multiplied by 1 by 2 and the outcome is 1 by 4 Similarly, with the third case, uh, in which our outcome is uh, tail head, so probability of getting the tail in the first uh, in the first event or the first flipping of coin is one by two, and then in the second uh, flipping of coin, the outcome uh, the head as outcome also have a probability of one by two. So the uh, final probability of the event tail head that means in the first event in the first flipping it is uh, the coin is having 
tail and in the second flip uh, flipping event the coin is uh, giving the output as head so this uh, uh, oh, oh, this output has this uh, output has the uh, the probability of 1 by 2 multiplied by 1 by 2 that is probability of first flip of the coin and getting the tail multiplied by probability of uh, getting the head in the second outcome okay then the fourth outcome is your tail tail again it is these are independent events so uh, so the outcome tail tail can be determined by multiplying the outcome of tail in the first outcome of the tail in the first event multiply by the outcome of tail in the second event, second event okay so 1 by 2 multiply by 1 by 2 so it is 1 by 4 and also you can see there are actually four outcomes so any out any one outcome is going to be 1 by 4 uh, any outcome is going to have the probability of 1 by 4 right So what are the independent events that uh, I was talking about? Independent event is that that one event does not have the effect on the other uh, event, right? So spinning of the first coin is not affecting any way the outcome of the spinning of or the tossing of the second coin, right? So what is going to be the probability of at least one head? what is going to be the probability of uh, getting at least one head so out of all these outcomes there are total four outcomes and how many outcomes you are seeing at least one head so head head we are getting head in head tail we are getting head in tail head we are getting head in the tail tail we are not getting any head so tail tail is the only outcome out of the four that is not having any head so the probability is going to be you add up all these uh, probability of all these outcomes because these are um, yeah because these are mutually exclusive event and you can find out uh, the you can find out the probability of a union b or uh, yeah a union b by just a probability you can find out the probability of a union b by using the formula the, that is probability of a union b equal to probability of a plus probability of b provided that these two events are not overlapping with each other the outcome of these events are not overlapping with each other right so because these are mutually exclusive so we can just find out by adding the uh, probability of all these individual outcomes right so 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 it is going to give you 3 by 4 So now uh, another example of discrete probability distribution. So tossing a coin three times, how many outcome it is going to give you? Uh, tossing of one coin is going to give you can only give you two outcomes, head or tail. Similarly, second tossing of the coin is also going to give you two outcomes. The third one the same. So the total number of outcome would be. 2 multiply by 2 multiply by 2 that is 8 so there would be total number uh, there will be 8 number of the outcomes total in total okay so 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 the all the set of all the outcomes okay so the set of all the possible outcome is known as your sample space so our sample space is going to be head 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 tail head tail head head tail 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 head head tail head tail 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 head and tail 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 so these are all the possible outcomes that we are going to get so let capital x represent number of heads so this is our uh, event okay whose probability we are going to find out let x is going to represent number of heads so when number of head is zero number of head is zero uh, what is going to be the frequency in the outcome when the number of head is zero when we are flipping the coin so only one uh, Output is there in our sample space which has not Even a single head that is tail 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 So the frequency is one and, and the probability is going to be 
the frequency or the number of time this particular output is repeating itself in the sample space divided by all the outputs in the sample space so it is one by eight so how many outcomes do we have in our sample set that is having one head one head and so uh, only one head so there are three outcomes or the three elements in the subset that has only one head that is head tail 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 head and tail head tail these are all the three these are all these are the three outcomes that do have only three uh, only one head in it okay so how many outputs are there three so its frequency of frequency of the event that has only one out one head in the output is three so the probability of this event being uh, occurring is three by eight now another event is when x is equal to two or the number of heads are equal to two so how many outcomes are there which have got two heads in it okay so one output is head head tail Go, get, have two heads in it then head tail head again two heads then tail head head again two heads so there are total number of three outcomes or the elements that have two outcomes two outcomes two outcomes uh, two head in it so there are all, there are a total of three uh, outcomes that have two that have two heads in it okay then then the event where number of heads are equal to three how many outcomes can you see in the sample space only one outcome the first one head 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 this is the only outcome outcome of out of all the eight outcomes in our sample space that do have three heads in it okay so it's so frequency is one and the probability is going to be one by eight then comes your binomial distribution so there are certain phenomena in nature which can be identified as bernoulli's processes in which so for the binomial uh, distribution there are some assumptions so these are some of the assumptions there is a fixed number of n trial carried out trials carried out each trial has only two possible outcomes uh, those are success or failure or, or true or false etc okay then probability of occurrence of any outcome remains same over successive trials okay so it so suppose you are flipping a coin the probability of occurring head is one by two if you are flipping the coin second time still head is having the same probability of occurring so any number of times you are flipping the coin the probability of a particular event is still the same okay so that is what is being uh, said here okay the probability of occurrence of any outcome remains same over the successive trial and trials are statistically independent right so statistically independent means that the occurrence of an outcome or one trial does not affect the outcome of the other trial okay so if we are uh, flipping the coin two times so it doesn't matter what we are getting as the output in our first trial it will not have any effect on the output of the second uh, flipping of the coin okay so these so in that case the uh, trials are independent so your binomial so these are all the assumptions for your binomial distribution and your binomial distribution is a discrete uh, probability distribution which expresses the probability of one set of alternative th that is success and failure okay that is going to uh, that is going to express the probability of one set of alternative either the success or the failure so it is denoted as a uh, probability of x x is a event a event equal to ncr 
multiply by pr multiply by q and minus r where ncr is the uh, as you know is the expression for combination okay where you have got where you have got total n number of uh, l numbers to choose from and r are the number of the outcome that you are going or number of the places that you are going to uh, that you are going to have at one at any time okay and p is the probability of success and q is the probability of failure and probability of a p that is the success plus probability of q that is the probability of failure must be equal to one because p and q are complementary okay so let us see this binomial distribution with the example so a quiz consists of 10 multiple choice questions each question has five answers only one of which is correct pat plans to guess the answer to each question find the probability that pat gets one answer correct all 10 answer correct right so the question says that question consists of 10 multiple choice question each question has five possible answer and out of those five only one will be the correct one okay so what is the probability that the pat gets one answer correct out of the 10 question he is getting 10 he is getting one answer correct so here n is equal to 10 so there are actually there are total of 10 number of multiple choice question right and probability of getting uh, each question has five uh, possible answers okay so probability of getting uh, the probability of getting a question right here is been here it is 0.2 okay 0.2 why 0.2 because there are how many options there are five options and only one option is going to be correct one okay so the probability is going to be 1 by 5 or 2 by 10 2 by 10 becomes your 0.2 so probability of getting a correct answer is 0.2 so probability of getting one answer correct is going to be you in place of x capital x you put one so the expression becomes p one p of one equal to 10 factorial divided by one factorial multiplied by 10 minus one factorial so this is this comes from the ncr or the combination formula right ncr so n is the 10 and r is 1 right because we are we have to get the probability of one of that one outcome in which only one answer is the correct one okay so ncr n is 10 r is 1 you see and p is 0.2 and as i have already said that p and q are the complementary uh, probabilities pro, uh, contemporary sorry complementary events so they uh, so the pro, p plus q is going to be one right so p is 0.2 so the q will be one minus 0.2 so p raised to the power p raised to power r so r is one so q raised to power n minus r so 10 minus one so if you solve this you are here you are getting the uh, probability of getting only one answer correct that is 0.2684 so the other uh, question is what is going to be probability of getting all the answers correct so n is going to be 10 and r is also going to be 10 so the formula will becomes uh, p of 10 equal to 10 factorial divided by 10 factorial multiplied by 10 minus 10 factorial p raised to the power 10 p is 0.2 q raised to the power 10 minus 10 q is 1 minus 0.2 so after solving this you are getting 0 0.0000001 okay this is the probability of getting all the 10 answers correct let us see another example the probability that a baby is born 
a boy is 0.51 the midwife delivers 10 babies find the probability that exactly 4 are males the probability that at least 8 are male okay so n is 10 babies n is 10 right and probability of getting a boy is 0.51 so p is 0.51 so q will be 0.49 right the probability that exactly 4 are males so r is here 4 in first part and r is going to be 8 in the second part okay so your formula will become uh, p of x is equal to 4 uh, 10 cq sorry 10 c4 this is the expression for a combination multiply by probability raised to the power r r is 4 multiply by q raised to the power r right so p is 0.51 q is 1 minus 0.51 so 0 0.49 uh, raised to the power n minus r so 10 minus 4 is going to be 6 so that is equal to 0 0.197 right that is the answer of the first part the a part now for the solution of b part we have to find out the probability that at least four are males at least four are males uh, sorry at least 10 are males more than 10 also uh, will also be included in this category okay nines are male or all the tens are males this will also be uh, included in this group so probability of x that is uh, that is baby being a, a boy for probability that a baby being born is a boy uh, out of greater this uh, number is greater than equal to or eight times is going to is going to be p equal to x equal to eight plus p equal to x equal to nine plus p equal to x uh, x equal to ten so we can uh, use the formula again for all these terms so that is that is going to become 10 c 8.51 raised to power 8 multiplied by 0.49 raised to power 2 why right. how 10 c 8 because n c r n is 10 r is 8 here okay this is the uh, expression for your combination multiply by p raised to the power r so r is 8 p is probability of getting a boy that is 0.51 and q is 1 1 minus 0.51 or 1 minus p so it is going to give you uh, point, uh, 1 minus point, uh, 0.51 that is point 0.49 uh, so q raised to the power n minus r so 10 minus 8 it is going to give you 2 similarly for the other terms so it is giving you the answer point zero six two one for the b part of the question then another question in a college 20 percent of the students are girls in a random sample of five students uh, find the probability that there are at most two girls okay so uh, in a random sample of five students okay so your n is what n is five and how many girls are asked how many these students are asked to be the girls two so your r is two let x be the binomial variate denoting number of girls with the parameter n equal to 5 probability equal to 20 by 100 that is 0.2 px so this is the formula for the binomial probability distribution that is probability of x equal to x is equal to ncr here it is written as ncx so ncr pr raised to power q n minus r right the probability that x is less than or equal to 2 right because in our question it is asked us that there are at most two girls so that means equal to 2 or less than 2 so we have to find out the probability of x less than or equal to 2 so that means probability of x equal to 0 that is no girl probability of x equal to 1 that is only one girl and plus probability of x equal to 2 girls so we can apply this formula for all these three terms and we are getting the answer is 0 0.94208. Okay. 
so measures of central tendency and dispersion for the binomial distribution so mean of the binomial distribution mu is going to be np and is the number of uh, terms that that or the total number of terms that is given in the question the, uh, then p is the probability for the p is the uh, probability of the success the standard deviation of the binomial distribution is sigma equal to under root npq uh, sigma equal to under root npq n is again the total number of the term p is the uh, probability of success and q is the probability of uh, failure or 1 minus p the mean of binomial distribution is 20 and its standard deviation is 4 suppose then what would be npq you simply put the value of standard deviation in place of sigma and again place the value of mean in place of mu right and rearrange the equation and uh, find out from both the equation the value of p and then equalize that equalize that in both the equation and that will give you n equal to 100 probability of the success 1.5 probability of the failure or probability of q is 4.5 so the mean of um, uh, binomial distribution is 20 it is the another question and standard deviation is 7 so we, we will repeat the same uh, formula same process and we can find out this answer then comes your Poisson distribution so when there is a large number of trials but a small probability of success binomial calculation becomes impractical so if lambda is equal to mean number of occurrences of an event per unit interval of time or space then probability that it will occur exactly x times is given by probability of x probability of x time is equal to lambda raised to power x multiplied by e raised to power minus lambda divided by x factorial okay where e is the napier constant and e is equal to 2.7182 okay so this is the expression for your poison distribution so you can find out similarly to that of binomial distribution what are the characteristics of poison distribution it is a discrete distribution uh, same as that of a binomial distribution it is also a discrete distribution occurrences are statistically independent again same to the uh, same as that of your uh, binomial distribution mean number of occurrences in a unit of time is proportional to the size of unit that is if 5 in 1 year then t uh, 10 in 2 years mean of uh, poison distribution is lambda equal to np uh, standard deviation of uh, uh, poison distribution is sigma uh, under root sigma uh, sorry here under root lambda equal to under root np it is always right skewed your poison distribution the poison distribution is good approximation to binomial distribution when n is greater than or equal to 20 means when n is uh, large enough then it is better to use poison distribution instead of uh, binomial distribution right and p is less than or equal to 0 0.05 then comes your normal distribution we have already heard or read about this many times so it is a continuous so your poison as well as binomial were, were part of your discrete uh, probability distribution but your normal distribution is an example of a uh, continuous random distribution continuous distribution right so it is the continuous uh, probability distribution that is the random variable can take on any value within a given range so in this case our value is in the range form not a particular or uh, discrete value uh, for example height weight marks temperature etc these are example of your continuous variable so developed by 18th century mathematician astronomer Carl Gauss so also called Gaussian distribution so that is why your Gauss is, uh, your normal distribution is also known as Gaussian distribution it is symmetrical or unimodal uh, symmetrical and unimodal right 
it will have one mode only that means one peak it will be symmetrical it is also known as bell curved as already been covered in the previous lectures since it is symmetrical it mean median and mod all coincide right for a symmetrical graph mean median and mod all fall in at the same point the traits are asymptot asymptotic to horizontal axis that is uh, curve goes to infinity without touching the horizontal axis and x axis represent random variable like height weight etc already been uh, touched up point and y axis represent its uh, probability density function right so on y axis you are getting your probability distribution function probability density function right and on x axis you are getting the value of the variable range of the variable so area under the curve tells the probability the total area under the curve is one because your normal distribution is a example of density curve and area under the curve for density curve is one mean is going to be mu and standard deviation is going to be represented by sigma so only two parameters are considered for defining or for characterizing a normal distribution that is mean and standard deviation so same mean uh, different standard deviation or same standard deviation different means different means and different standard deviation will characterize two uh, graphs or two distribution as different one okay if either of these two variable is different in two uh, normal distribution curve they are different from one another okay so area under the normal curve uh, you we saw we read about an empirical rule that is also known as three sigma rule what does this rule say that that as we move from the center uh, from the center or from the uh, mean median mode because both all these three will be at the same point that is the center so if, as we move from the center towards the either side of the center by one standard deviation then the area under the curve for that case would be 68 percent and if you are moving uh, two standard deviation on the either direction from the middle point then the then the data points covered is going to be 95 percent and if you are moving three sigma or three standard deviation away on the other side from the mean from the mean here it is going to be represented by cent, uh, central point uh, if we are moving three standard deviation away from the mean then we are approximately including 99.8 percent of all the data points so this is a empirical rule and a very important rule for the normal distribution curve so it is also known as 90 to 99.7 rule okay so area under the curve the mean plus one a, a standard deviation covers approximately 60 percent of the area under the curve the mean of plus two the mean plus plus two standard deviation or minus standard deviation means if you are going or moving two standard deviation away from the mean on the other side you will be covering 95 percent of the data and if you are if you are moving three standard deviation away from the mean on the other side area under the curve is covering the 99.7 percent of all the area so you are covering 99.7 percent of all the data points Stand now the another type or another curve or modified curve from the uh, normal distribution curve is standard normal distribution curve so if we just convert our x value to z value okay by using this formula that is z equal to x minus mu divided by sigma okay and then we plot the graph this is known as normalizing the normal distribution curve so our distribution will be called as standard normal distribution curve in which your mean will be zero and standard deviation will be one right so z is the number of standard deviation from x to mean uh, also called z score right so x is the value of your uh, normal distribution curve right x is the value of your uh, random variable
okay so this is all for uh, today we will discuss other things in the next lecture